these combat tips can help you become invincible and reach levels unimaginable in solo leveling your eyes. Let's talk about it. Let's go YouTube, no good even here. Come with you today with an in-depth combat guide. So guys, with this, you'll definitely be able to have the know-how when it comes to increasing your combat skill, when it comes to dodging, when it comes to utilizing the best possible potential for your son Jinu and your hunters. So before we get into that, make sure you leave a like on the video, join the Discord server, the No Good Mafia, and let's get straight into it. So the first thing is actually gonna reside in the settings. I do have to say that this is a PC aimed kind of skills guide. If you guys do have controller while you're on mobile, feel free to use these tips as well. I personally don't see how you guys do it when it comes to touchscreen mobile, but some of you guys are actually doing fine. So kudos to you, but Let's talk about some key binds you want to change. The first thing is definitely going to be the QTE and evade, guys. I honestly don't know why it's like this. I personally find it better using it this way because it kind of reminds me of Minecraft when it comes to the left shift button being the evade because you can dash with that and the QTE skill being spaced just feels way, way more easier. Now, when it comes to the mouse that I use, I do have a Logitech G502 mouse. That gives me five extra buttons on the left side of this mouse, and I use all of those for my keybinds when it comes to solo leveling your eyes. Let's talk about a few of them though. So the basic skills are these left and right backers, which are basically just macros right here on the left side of my left click mouse button. I can click these with my index finger at any point in any given time. So the basic skills, I definitely wanna utilize that as much as possible. So I use that right there. And then with Q&E now being free, I bumped that down to my weapon skills. I love this right here personally, because I can just use these at any time. I can use it, it with my ring finger or my index finger, whether it's Q and E. I do find this to be a better switch when it came to the weapon skills. And then the ultimate skill is also Z. It's not the actual keybind Z on the keyboard, but it's a keybind on the final button on my mouse. So that's right by my thumb. I can use that at any given point. And then these grayed out keybinds, we have the summons for supports and the shadows. So that's my back button for the support hunters. And then the forward button is for the shadow. Guys, I honestly feel like this is game changing. If you do have a Logitech mouse, then definitely feel free. I'm not saying you need a mouse to use this, but at least try to use these Q and E skills, change it up, see if that works for you guys. The next thing we have to talk about is basically all my other controls. So I run two button and three button modes. I never experimented with the one button. I personally don't think I would like it. I feel like it probably kind of simplifies it in the game. Not saying you don't have to play it a little bit more simplified, but I feel like having that full control will aim you to be as better as possible. When it comes to the camera shake, that's on high. That really doesn't matter. You can, of course, turn this down to get a better feel for the game. I do have manual camera control because the smart lock on is kind of as in my opinion. When it came to battle controls, this is also on manual. I only use auto mode when I'm kind of grinding instance or encore dungeons that I already beat with a three star. That way the CPU doesn't, you know, make any mistakes for me. I'm not dying or anything like that. I would never use auto or semi auto mode on any mission, on any story mode though. I personally feel like I want that full control. And with that, you basically sharpen up your skills each and every day that you play the game. Now, when it came to support controls, I also put this on manual. I wanna manually summon my supports, guys. And with that, with my support button being that back button, I can click it at any given moment, kinda just spam it if I need to. That way, I don't forget that my supports are always there. Honestly, guys, I feel like the most important thing to really talk about would be the extreme evasion uses. So you guys can use extreme evasion anytime after you hit that shift button or space button or whatever your shift is. You guys always want to be utilizing that. Extreme evasion is only available if you do have shifts. So keep that in mind. You want to be utilizing your shifts properly. You can always reset your shifts, by the way, when you hit a new stage. So as you can see, we just used up all ours there and the right right back. But if you do use your shifts, you do want to time it properly. Sometimes in the bottom right, they kind of give you a warning. Your circle kind of glows orange. And when it fully glows all the way up, you can get that kind of information. I don't get it on this egress mode for some reason, whatever reason that may be. I'm not too sure, but hey, whatever the case may be, it definitely happens on the harder stages, but I don't think they utilize it on egress. It's probably just an instance dungeon thing. 
but as you guys can see we're just utilizing our extreme evasion so honestly i feel like egress is probably one of the best people to even practice ex extreme evasion on so if you feel like you're not really good at extreme evasion you can definitely just go into a tier of egress and try and practice as much as possible because he'll definitely teach you the various ways you can practice extreme evasion utilizing your shadow step whatever the case may be there's a lot of ways you guys can go about using it. That's gonna defense decrease. That's gonna slow time down for your opponent. That time's gonna matter over time as well, guys. So you never know what's gonna happen, what's gonna make you a better player. As you can see, we're extremely evading as much as possible to show you guys that I've really, really keened in when it came to Egress, and then he hits me. <laughs> but that's basically the point guys you definitely want to just be utilizing extreme evasion there's a lot you can learn from just using egress as a model so definitely now in the later chapters i think the orcs probably have the best kind of ai or combat power when it came to not being able to dodge them perfectly they are very very interesting when it came to dodging but if you guys lock in on egress if you utilize his dodges you definitely can get the know-how on how to basically extreme evade so go ahead and practice on egress now when it comes to your hunters guys these are a few tips that you definitely want to utilize first things first well you want to always do skills and then qte right after always you don't have your qte available but when you guys do have it available um there's a few ways you can get your qte to spawn though you can extreme evade and your qte is going to instantly pop up when you summon your shadows your qte also pops up but the main reason you want to be utilizing your qte is after using extreme evade and sometimes it just instantly pops up by itself if you even if you don't QTE or even if you don't extreme evade but you guys definitely want to be utilizing that as much as possible when you summon shadows when you do ultimates those also bring it up not saying you have to immediately QTE when you do see this but I personally find it kind of being the best facet unless I'm mainly trying to do a lot of damage with one specific character then you can always do that with that in mind, you guys definitely want to be able to utilize that to become even more unstoppable in the game. You get a lot of invincibility frames on the hunter side as well, so you guys need to keep that in mind. I feel like there's a great, great balance when it comes to using Sunji Nu and the hunters. I didn't initially feel this way, but there's a lot of ways that you can have, you have way more invincibility frames when it comes to the hunters than your Sunji Nu because there's the QTE, there's the ultimate skill usage, there's a lot of ways that you can guys can prevent getting hit when it came to your hunters. So make sure you guys are utilizing your hunters, utilize your QTE, utilize your extreme evasion. I feel like that's the name of the game here. Extreme evasion is going to take you guys insanely far. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts below while you're at it. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all that good stuff. And if you wanna know how to just increase your basic power, the video on screen can actually help you do that. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Peace.